I am over $10 million in debt, and I couldn't be happier about it because there is good debt and there is bad debt. Some would disagree with me on this point and they would say that all debt is bad debt, but if you know how to use borrowed money to your advantage in the real estate market, you can make a higher rate of return on money that technically isn't even yours. And when you make money on borrowed money, your rate of return is infinite because it's not your money, honey. We call this OPM, other people's money, which is what debt is. This is someone else's money that you are borrowing. And in this video, I'll break down my top three ways to make money in real estate investing using debt. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help a thousand people create a million dollars of net worth with real estate investing. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. When I was growing up, and let's be honest, I still am. My parents and their friends were of the mindset that you could be financially free when you pay off your house. They had mortgages on their houses and their goal was to pay off those mortgages because when they were paid off, that would reduce their debt and therefore increase their financial security and stability. This mindset was passed down to them from their parents who had the same train of thought. But things are a little different today. For one, interest rates in 1976 when my parents bought my childhood home were 12%. And in 1982, they jumped up to 18%. That meant if you were making a mortgage payment of $2,000 per month, $1,850 of that was going towards interest and only $150 was going towards principal. So you can see why my parents were so focused on paying off their debt. With the current interest rates where they're at at around 2%, if you have that same $2,000 per month mortgage payment, 750 of that is going towards interest and 1,250 of that is going towards paying down your principal every single month. That is a huge difference. So the first way to make money with debt in real estate is to mortgage your properties. The majority of investors are on board for this with their rental properties, but they would still prefer not to have any debt on their principal residence or the house they live in. But I wanna challenge that too. Most people consider their principal residence an asset because it has value. But if you look at the definition of an asset, an asset is something that pays us every month and a liability is something that we pay for every month. So with this definition, our principal residence is actually a liability and not an asset. Even if it's paid off entirely and you have no debt associated with it, you still have to pay for your utilities, property tax, insurance, maintenance, and repairs. So this is not an asset, this is a liability. For instance, if I have a $500,000 property and it's completely paid off, meaning I don't have a mortgage on it, that means that there is $500,000 in potential cash sitting in that property. And that $500,000 is growing at whatever rate the rent market is growing in that area. So if the market goes up by 10%, that's great. The value goes up by $50,000 in one single year. But if the market goes up by 2%, then I've only made $10,000 on that money in that same year. And if the average return in the stock market is six to 7% annually, I'd be better off to take that money and put it in the stock market versus the real estate market. In a lot of ways, you're better off to mortgage your property to 80% loan to value, which would be a mortgage of $400,000 and take that money and invest it somewhere else. You'll see See how this really starts to make sense in a minute. If I apply this same principle to a rental property, this strategy works even better because if you're buying the right rental properties, you shouldn't have to be out of pocket any money every month. Your tenants are paying rent and that rent should be paying all of your costs and you should be making money at the end of each month through positive cash flow. So on a rental property, there's three ways to make money. You can make money with your cash flow, you can make money as the mortgage is being paid down, and you can also make money through natural appreciation as the property rises in value. I'll go back to my earlier example and show you the power of using debt. If I have a $500,000 property as a rental property and it's completely debt free, and I'm making $2,000 a month in positive cash flow after all of my expenses were paid, I could make $24,000 per year in cash flow. That sounds pretty good. And if the property went up in value by 3%, which is around the rate of inflation, then my property would go up another $15,000 per year. So every year I would be making $39,000 on my $500,000 cash that I have invested in that property, which is about 7.8% return annually on my money. If you're not sure how to calculate return on investment, watch this video right here after you're done with this video. But what if I take that same example and I bring in debt and put a mortgage on that property? On a rented property, we usually qualify for a 20% down payment, which means that we would have to come up with $100,000 
$100,000 in cash to buy this property, plus closing costs, and we would have a $400,000 mortgage. Now, because I have a $400,000 mortgage that I need to pay for, or excuse me, my tenants need to pay for, I might only make $200 a month in positive cash flow. So my yearly cash flow drops to 2,400 instead of 24,000 with no mortgage. But remember, I have a mortgage on the property and every time I make a mortgage payment, I pay down the principal on the mortgage. So over that same year, I will pay down approximately $12,000 on the mortgage. And because I still have a $500,000 property that will grow at the same 3% inflation rate, that stays the same at $15,000 per year in natural appreciation. So I add up my $12,000 that I paid down on the mortgage, my $2,400 in positive cash flow, and my $15,000 in market appreciation, and that gives me a total of $29,400 per year. That's about $10,000 less than the other mortgage freeway. But wait a minute, we only have $100,000 of cash invested in this property versus the $500,000 in cash invested the other way around. So if I take $29,400 and I divide that by $100,000, my rate of return becomes 29.4% per year. So you can very quickly see why I'm a fan of having debt on your properties in order to earn a higher rate of return on your money. The number two way to use debt to make money in real estate is utilizing something we call a home equity line of credit or a HELOC for short. A home equity line of credit is money that the bank will lend you and and because the bank will secure that loan against a property, they are willing to loan that money to you at a very low interest rate. If you were to go into the bank and ask for an unsecured loan, then that interest rate would be significantly higher, usually two to three times the rate of a secured loan. The nice thing about a home equity line of credit is that you are only required to make interest only payments on that loan as opposed to a mortgage where you make interest and principal payments. So let's take that same $500,000 property and maybe it has a $300,000 mortgage on it and the bank is willing to give you the same 80% loan to value they were willing to give you before, but in this case, $300,000 of that is on a mortgage and they would give you $100,000 in the form of a home equity line of credit. The current interest rates on home equity lines of credit are approximately 3%, but as I mentioned before, you're only responsible for paying interest only on that loan, so the interest on a monthly basis would work out to about $250 a month. Now I could take that $100,000 in cash and I could lend it out at 12% interest. Now, I know what you're gonna say, who the hell's borrowing money at 12% interest? The answer to that question is, me and a lot of other people because I use this money on a short-term basis for various projects and then I pay it back when the project is complete or when we refinance the property and pay out the high interest loans at that time. So if you can lend out your money at 12% and borrow it at 3%, then you can make 9% interest on the split. So I'd be making $1,000 in interest on $100,000 at 12% and I would have to pay the interest only payments of $250 a month, leaving me a profit of $750 per month. So what is the rate of return on this money? Well, technically, this is borrowed money from the bank, so my rate of return is infinite because I'm using the bank's money to make a 9% return on their money. Now the naysayers will quickly point out that if you're making 12% interest on your money, this must be a high risk investment because again, we are conditioned to believe that with high risk comes high reward. But this is not necessarily the case. I could still lend my $100,000 and I could secure it against a piece of real estate through a mortgage. If this mortgage has a decent loan to value, I have trust in the borrower and the property that I've secured my money against is in a solid location that doesn't see much fluctuation in value, then this investment can be more secure in many ways than any other type of investment. So stick that in your pipe and smoke it. The third way to make money with debt in real estate will definitely be the most controversial. Before we get into it, if you're interested in learning more about the various ways we can use debt to profit in real estate, I offer a series of master classes designed to teach you the most effective ways to do this. Check out my website at darrenboros.com for more information. The third way to make money with debt in real estate is to use credit cards and consumer cards. Now, I know what you're thinking, is this guy for real? But hear me out. Not all credit cards are created equal and some consumer cards have deferred payment options. For instance, Home Depot will offer you a Home Depot credit card and they often run promotions that you can take up to 12 months to pay back the outstanding balance, interest free. So if I'm doing a renovation on a property and I purchase material on my Home Depot credit card and the renovations that I do will increase the value of my property and I can refinance within 12 months of borrowing this money and pay it back before I have to make an interest payment, 
I have essentially used Home Depot's money for free. The other way we use credit cards to our advantage is similar to consumer cards. If you go to a site like BorrowWell or RateHub and you enter in your information, they will give you your credit score. And oftentimes, there will be vendors that will offer you credit cards as well. Some of those credit cards offer 0% interest, so we could take that same credit card and use that to do improvements to our properties. Or we could technically loan it out as a private lender and make the interest on that money without having to pay the credit card company anything. Now, the most important part about this strategy is that you must pay attention to the terms and conditions of these cards and when the payments are due. You also have to pay attention to when your interest-free time runs out, but if you can use these kinds of strategies, there can be a tremendous upside with leveraging and using debt in real estate. So now I want to hear from you. Feel free to drop your comments, good or bad, into the comments section below. If you have questions related to making money with debt or anything else related to real estate, you can also leave those in the comments section below. And you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.